Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Digital Flight Deck here, and we are doing a bit of a showcase flight today. I'm going to be showing off uh, some of the work done by a fellow who has uh, done some work in the Toronto area. Uh, it's uh, Roman Design. He's done the airport here at Brampton, which I've kind of showed a little bit earlier. He's also done the airport over at Buttonville, which is another small airport, this one to the north of Toronto. And he's done some scenery add-ons uh, that he's released as freeware. So we're currently at the Brampton Airport, uh, my home airfield. And what we're going to do is we're going to fly in the 172 here. Uh, and we're going to go down and loop Toronto. We're going to go to the west over Mississauga where he's done some uh, uh, scenery add-on stuff. Uh, we're going to fly along the lake, go over the main part of the city. And we will... Um, uh, we will do all that to see how it looks and how, how it's uh, functioning and then we'll swing up and we'll land in uh, Buttonville and we'll take a look at it. But first we're gonna, I'm going to do some shots here, kind of showing you the work he's done. Now, I haven't been coming to this airport for a little over, well, 20 years now. Um, I can tell you it's a, one, it's a massive improvement over the airport that is the default scenery. But second, it is pretty accurate. I, I, I recognize places instantly. I recognize it's like looking at phot photos sometimes from a distance. So we'll take a look and uh, we'll come back and then get the aircraft ready to go. fantastic looking airport and what I'm going to do quickly just so you can see it at night is I'm going to grab the time slider I'll show you what it looks like down there when the sun goes down and there we go very well done uh, there's a link in the description below uh, to the website uh, where you'll find this airport buttonville and all the uh, add-on sceneries we're going to look at as well all right, so I'll put that back to where I had it. 10 o'clock. And we'll get ready to head over to let's get down a bit. I can move in. We'll head over to um, Buttonville. Uh, it is slightly choppy. I am running it on in 4K and everything on my system. There's a lot of scenery uh, loading in and everything. So she's a little bit choppy, uh, but I want to get the visuals. So I'll accept that. Now the scenery is released, uh, there's four of them. One is Niagara Falls. We're not going to look at that today, but uh, there's not much you can do with the actual falls because of the way they're generated, but he's he's redone the buildings in the area, improved the, the look of the whole place, and at night she's illuminated like they do, in, especially in the wintertime with the colored lights on the falls and on the ice and everything. What we're going to see is uh, we're going to uh, see Mississauga off in the... Uh, we're going to fly over Mississauga at Oakville, which he's done uh, stuff for, which looks great, and then over Toronto itself, mainly the downtown area try to straighten some of that uh, default scenery that's there. So we'll get inside the aircraft 
and we'll get her ready to go. So bear with me, it's been a little while since I've flown uh, the 172 in the sim. So, there's the battery master on. Put the beacon light on. Fuel is in. Fuel cutoff is in. Fuel is okay. You can be quiet. Fuel is on both tanks. Uh, we'll go with throttle to quarter. Taws system test. Okay. Thank you. Uh, fuel pump on. Should have positive fuel flow. And fuel pump off. So we should be able to start the airplane. Uh, parking brake is on. Let's see what happens. That is a positive sign. Okay, avionics are on. Uh, nav lights are on. Taxi lights are on. So I put the direct route over to Mud Village just as a reference. Um, but that's fine. We're not going to really be using it because we're going to fly south. Now, if I zoom out. So we're going to fly out this way. This is the way you'd actually go around Toronto. Pearson is just a few miles off to the southeast. And we got to avoid it. So we're going to head west a little bit down here. Across the Oakville-Mississauga boundary. Then back along the lake. We'll fly over the Island Airport. Which is a uh, custom airport from Microsoft Flight Sim. Handcrafted as they call it. Uh, up along the lake into the east end of Toronto and then we'll loop up and around and then come into Buttonville and we'll be looking at the sites along the way All right. so I'm not using uh, track IR for this flight we should be okay without it uh, initial heading, we're going to fly, once we're up and going, we're going to fly off at about a uh, 222 degree heading to the west to stay out of the Toronto airspace, which you can see here. I mean, this is all, actually we'll go 224. This is all... Uh, Toronto airspace, so we're going to be under it for the entire flight. I'm only going up to uh, 2,000 feet. All right. We can release the parking brake. Sorry, uh, buddy, but we don't need you today. So winds are out of the east, so we're going to do an easterly uh, takeoff. Just have to watch our acceleration here. There's the fuel tanks where you would fuel up. engine RPMs up a little bit. Ideally you'd be uh, idling in around a thousand RPM. Help the engine warm up. Now in the default scenery there is a huge hump here and that was the first thing I noticed. Besides the visuals of the buildings and everything looking correct was uh, that the train had been smoothed out more to what it is. There is, there is, in reality, a slight hump or a slight rise, but you're going off-roading when you tried to climb up here. All right, so we're gonna, there's no, there's, I do have other traffic on, but I'm not on VATSIM or Iveo or having live traffic. 
I think I just got some AI on if they're in the area. So that's the main terminal building off to our our right. That's the pilot's area where they do all their flight prep. This is a huge training school, uh, by the way. Biggest in Canada, I believe. Classrooms and everything. There's aircraft in and out of here all the time. Major training center. A lot of private airplanes are also based out of here. And uh, for the private pilots and those students, this is where they do all their flight prep and planning and paperwork and stuff. Classrooms are on the other side. Parking, there's a restaurant in here. And uh, it's the restaurant right there. Old outdoor dining area. These are all private hangars in the back. And this is the Great War Flying Museum over here. They uh, build and fly World War I type airplanes. Uh, kind of free, you know, they're not 100% exact, uh, but they give you the, the, the look and feel of what aviation was like over 100 years ago. And uh, that's spent a lot of time there. That's one of the museums I, uh, I volunteer at. All right, so we're going to come around and we will get ready to go. I'm going to pop open my Navigraph charts for Buttonville just so I've got the layout and everything uh, available to me. It'll be a visual approach. Alright, so we'll probably go for runway 03 when we get there. Alright, so taxi light will come off, landing light goes on, strobe light goes on, everything else is set. We'll go uh, with the flaps. One for takeoff. Circuit altitude here is 1700 feet. Um, change the altimeter. You can see it's 930 uh, here, but because of the airspace, it's actually an 800 foot circuit of height at this airport. Uh, no one on final. So we'll move out. Again, no throttle quadrant yet. Hoping it comes this month. It would be nice. I picked up the honeycomb yolk uh, back in November, which should have arrived in December. So I'm hoping the quadrant, which they're saying now is February, will arrive in January. <clears throat> we will see. So we're going to take off, uh, climb out, and we'll do a left turn around and then head off towards the west southwest. I got a pallet loader. Yo, forklift, get off the runway. These AI vehicles sometimes drive you nuts. We're going to ignore him. He won't affect us in any way. <clears throat> and we're going to throttle up and go to full power. Airspeed's live. Maybe he thinks he wants to be a snowplow when he grows up. It's 55 knots. We'll pull back. And we are airborne. So we're going to give it a little bit of trim. Keep the climb going. At about 400 feet up, we will retract the flaps. So that's going to be about 1,300 feet. So flaps go up. It's going to drop the nose, so we got to adjust for that. So autopilot on. Go 
to heading mode now. We're going to square it up a little bit just so we can clear the airfield. And there she is over there. basically enter the left downwind for the runway and then just extend off beyond. We're coming up for 2,000 feet. So we'll bring the RPMs back to about 2,400. Into the green anyway. 2,330 is fine. Two six zero is the reciprocal for the runway we just took off on. Beautiful winter day here. <clears throat> These are the, the this is the actually the Niagara escarpment comes all the way up here, and it actually goes all the way up towards Owen Sound. Um, this is a, a part of it that comes along here. You can actually see it from the air and. Uh, you do get turbulence over it when the wind is blowing. Alright, so we got some beautiful sun reflecting off the snow. And as you can see, it's slightly choppy, uh, but again, I want the visuals. Um, any type of scenery add on is going to be frame intensive. And there's the airport. So we'll now go to 240. And we're going to carry along like this, as you can see where we are. And once we get out a little bit, we're going to go basically around this ring down to the lake, and then we'll cut right along. We'd have to be in contact with the uh, controllers of either Toronto or the island if they were open to do this, and I have done it. There we go. I made a, uh, a slight change to the video settings, uh, graphic settings, so should be a little bit smoother. Yeah, it looks a little bit smoother. Okay, so we're heading south, so we're going to uh, turn a little bit more, 150. I want to get over uh, the Oakville area so we can see it. And we're going to hold 2,000 feet for the entire flight so we're nice and low and slow. There we go. It's exaggerating, this is the default terrain generation, but it's exaggerating some of the valleys and stuff. Uh, they're not that steep, um, but they are out there. So we'll uh, fly down to here, we'll fly around Oakville, and then uh, we'll come up over Mississauga a little bit, and then loop back down, and then come along the bottom of Toronto. Again, all in an effort to see what's going on down here with the terrain and the, uh, the add-ons. I've spotted some buildings out this way. I think that's the uh, build-up for Oakville. So we're going to head over there and take a look, see what we see. It doesn't take long leaving Toronto before you're out in farm country. And running into small towns. So 
So after Oakville, we'll, we'll actually head up towards um, the... Uh, Pearson, uh, cover over Mississauga, and then loop back down. And there's somebody coming in. Again, we're pretty low. A little bit of loading lag. You can see the town coming up, or the city of Oakville. So there's a downtown coming up. Now one of the things, I haven't seen it yet, but one of the things that I have noticed coming into Toronto and the airliners is that there's some terrain glitches uh, as of the last update. Um, these pyramids and humps, when you get up really close they disappear, but that medium to long LOD draw range, they're all there. Some subdivisions. Here is Oakville. Actually, this is Mississauga. I'm looking at it. Oakville is off this way. So a lot of these buildings, these apartments and complexes are all added in. So, okay. So we'll go over that way in a second. So... This is the Square One Shopping Mall, for anyone who knows the area, Highway 403, running just north of it. The 401 is back up here. 403 here eventually takes you down towards uh, Niagara Falls and the QEW. It's kind of a, a highway that loops the west side of the city to prevent you know, traffic from coming in. But these buildings look fantastic. Uh, City Hall is down here. Uh, there's the mall. These are all condos, apartment buildings. A couple famous buildings that were in the near City Hall right there. A couple famous buildings, these twisted towers, condos. Ah, oh, it looks great. So let's head over to Oakville. We'll uh, see what's happening up that way. There you can see some of the artifacting terrain wise ahead of us. Uh, out along here. So this is the Oakville area. Oh, that's a huge terrain glitch. Oakville's right down on the water, so that's very nice. Yeah, this is all looking fantastic. Now these glitches are not caused by the add-on software. I've tested it and removed them, and other people are reporting it as well. It is caused by the uh, last update, so hopefully they get that fixed.
right, so we're gonna wrap around here in the Oakville suburbs. There you can see the Mississauga buildings in the downtown Mississauga. Now you might kind of go, well, this is all part of the same place. Why is it in all Toronto? And again, you got to realize that when these places were founded a long time ago, they were a lot smaller. There was a lot more open land between them. Even Mississauga itself is made up of smaller places like Streetsville and Cooksville. They were all small towns that came together and formed into uh, um, formed into one. And Toronto itself was made up of small uh, smaller cities like Scarborough and North York and East York, Toronto itself, Etobicoke, uh, and they themselves are made up of smaller communities that grew up um, where I grew up in the eastern part of Toronto. I had little places called West Hill and Asian Court. And, you know, things change, population densities increase, cities expand. But this looks great. I mean, this uh, really adds to the look as you're coming in. Then you got the buildings up here, the bigger buildings, the harbors along the waterfront. That's the island where Toronto Island Airport is out that way. There used to be a landmark uh, out here. The Four Sisters, it was an old power plant. I, I think it's gone now, but it was an old power plant that had four. Uh, four stacks. Um, they were called the Four Sisters and they were a landmark as you came in along the, the coast here. That's the, uh, I believe that's the Credit River coming down. Yeah, that would be Highway 10, you yeah, the port, this would be the town of Port Credit down here. Port Credit Marina would be under us. We'll uh, turn this way, we'll cut across towards the island. Of course in real life you'd want to maintain gliding distance to shore in case of an engine failure. But I've been sneaky and took uh, failures out, so that is not a concern for us today. the marina. <clears throat> this is the eastern part of Mississauga. And just once we get around here, <clears throat> Is where the <coughs> oh sorry is where the boundary is for Toronto, and I think it's right around this river here, the Etobicoke River. And then that's all Toronto to the east. So one of my earlier videos, early videos, when the flight sim first came out, I, I flew out. Uh, oh, she's loading. Flew out of the island airport here, and we got to see just. Um, it's right on this part here. We got to see how. Uh, make sure my mouse is pointing at it. That island right there is the island. We got to see how um, it looked for. Uh, um, the fault scenery, and there were some issues with it. Um, although it did look pretty good in some ways, other ways, not so much.
So there's a highway that runs north-south. Uh, I was trying to think of where it is. Somewhere down around here. And that's the boundary. A huge condo development here. And that's really only the last 20 years. This used to be all flat, but it's all been developed. And beautiful views out over the water. A lot of sailboats out here uh, in the good weather. see little clumps of buildings. You find them uh, once you get out of the downtown there's uh, a clump up at uh, basically the 401 which is the major east-west highway at the north end of the city and Young Street the major arterial, arterial road. Uh, there's a big clump of buildings and office towers and stuff and there's more when you get up to about the mid area of the city as you can see here. So we're going to pop out so we can get a good look down on it. So here's the shoreline. This is the island airport, uh, located right there. The shore. Toronto is a harbor, uh, waterfront city. It runs all the way up. This is all out of the commercial stuff. It, on these parts of the islands over here, you have parks and a few residents, um, kind of holdovers from 100 years ago, on very, very generous long-term leases. Um, and this is the downtown area, so let's see what we can see. You can see the CN Tower right here and Sky Dome underneath it. Yeah, that CN Tower is looking a lot better. It's already, I, I can already tell, I can already identify buildings that I know and, 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 and see. Very nicely done. We'll jump back in as we go over. It's Ontario Place. The first IMAX theater was in the uh, the sphere here. It's a big concert stadium. It's kind of an outdoors one with a roof over it, but it is what it is. And there is the downtown condos as you come in. There's a highway. This is a highway, elevated highway, though it's put it on a giant embankment. It's actually the uh, Gardner Expressway runs through the south part of the city, east to west. There's the Sky Dome. And the CN Tower looking much better, much better. It's an old railroad roundhouse. It's now a brewery called Steam Whistle. A lot of the old iconic buildings here. It's the Royal York Hotel. Used to be, used to be in the 50s, that building there was the tallest building in Toronto. And look at it now. But yeah, there's, uh, you can see some of the, the signs on the bank and the buildings, they're all correct. The architecture is correct. That's Union Station, the rail station in Toronto. Uh, subway runs in there, the GO train, which is the regional train, runs in there, and Via Rail, which is the national trains, run in there. And that's uh, Young Street, and you can see how it all goes up, carries on all the way up north. All the buildings, this is uh, we're probably around Eglinton, we got some more buildings, and then up at the 401, you got another cluster. That airfield uh, should be. Yeah, that's Downs View. It's an old Air Force base, uh, and that is where De Havilland uh, built the Q400s, or builds the Q400s, and you sometimes see some of their uh, Challenger private jets uh, in there. They still build them there today. There's the Don, uh, Don uh, River running up what's called the Don Valley, and there's a highway that runs up the side of it. And that's the eastern outlet to get out of the downtown area. Now we're starting to head over the eastern suburbs. Oh yeah, this, this is very nice, very well done. And it uh, really does add a good feel to what it actually looks like. 
Congratulations, uh, Roman Design. You have done well. We're just going to continue up this way for a bit. And shortly we'll turn north and swing back towards Buttonville Airport. So this is an actual route they will send uh, where you can request ATC in the area uh, to take along the water. Uh, wouldn't be much lower than this. Uh, maybe, maybe down to 1500 depending on how busy they are. <clears throat> but I have flown this a few times in real life. And it's really nice at night coming down here and seeing the entire uh, city illuminated. Uh, and there's uh, this is these are what I was seeing on my way into Pearson. Horrible alien pyramids out in the wilderness. the buildings are appearing white. Part of it's a LOD issue and part of it is a uh, <coughs> I've got snow on the ground and I think it's covering some of the buildings too. Alright, so you can see we're now um, we've gone past the airport there. So we're going to now turn to the north. We're going to come up and then we'll come back and circle and I'm going to cross over and do a left circuit into uh, 03 will be the runway we're landing on today. Airport elevation is 650 feet, so 1600 feet will be our circuit altitude. I believe this is the Rouge River kind of the eastern boundary of Toronto and then we're into the next town over which is Pickering. And there you can see Oh, these are appearing. We'll just ignore those. Uh, nope, 
Actually, we're not at the Rouge River. That's okay. Uh, oh, I know where we are. This is the, uh, it's called the Scarborough Town Center, the old uh, center of the town of uh, city of Scarborough, which was the easternmost part of Toronto now. Um, it's an old shopping mall. Uh, and it's also where the city hall was, and there's condos and everything built around it. This is the 401 highway that east-west. It's actually part of the Trans-Canada Highway, um, which you can go from one side of the country out in the Maritimes, out in the Atlantic Ocean, all the way out to BC and the Pacific Ocean. This is a huge rail yard through this whole area here. Keep forgetting my mouse isn't in the same position in the recording as it is on my screen. Huge, I think it's CN rail yard. Let's kind of see the railroad tracks running up here. Another airplane coming in from our right. Alright, so we're going to head towards the airport now. Probably about... I'm sure some of this is autogen, um, done by the, uh, the sim itself, but when it blends in with the hand done buildings and the improvements and everything that, uh, ignore that, whatever that is, out, uh, out that way. And there's those glitches. Now they should disappear when we get closer. Some of them, a lot of them seem to be water based. Like the water's throwing them off. And it's not the fact that I have snow on the ground because I've done it without uh, snow and it does it as well. You can see they kind of flatten out and disappear when you get closer for the most part. Some of them turn into meteor craters. All right, so we're getting close. That's where the airport is there. So it should be. Coming up ahead of us, there's another highway. It sits right alongside the Highway 404. You can see on the screen, uh, there's my mouse, running just on the other side of the airport, that road, that's a major highway. That runs north out of eastern Toronto. And there's the airport right off our nose, right there. Alright, so let's uh, get our altitude uh, down to 1600. And uh, start to slow her up as well. Sixteen fifty, ideally, as we cross over the field. There we go. See the multiple two runways. 
and we're going to be landing on this one here and going in this direction. There we go, 1650. A little bit more power back in. So we're getting a little low. So 03 is our heading, so we're going to be, be want to be going uh, uh, 210 degrees. So we'll go to 210. Come on, stop doing that. There we go. So that's our indicator. Actually, what I'm going to do is put it back to 03. I'll use that as my reminder for where we got to be. So we're doing a nice gentle turn. I want to get a little bit of space out from the runway so I can uh, do sharper turns for base and final. go. So we're good. So we'll bring the power back to about 1500 and we're going to hold our elevation. Bring our speed back. Go uh, landing lights on. And we're into the white, so first level of flaps will come out. We'll get down to about 65 knots. So level 2 flaps. I'm extending out pretty far here. Alright. So we want to trim for 65 and then use power to control. that's turning the wrong way on the other side. Keep trimming. Turn zero 03 and then we'll correct when we get the airport in sight. It's going to be a little harder to see in the snow. So, I don't know what's going on here. Alright, we're way too low. I don't know why the autopilot wants to keep going on. the airport over there. There we 
we go. Seems like it was fighting me the entire time. Alright, well, we're coming in on a funny angle. There's the runway. And yeah, they do kind of fly by the buildings here. There we go. Stay out of the trees, crossing the highway. Well, we found our way back. And down we go. Hold it off, and we're down. Not enough GA flying recently. Too many airliners. So welcome to Buttonville. Kind of the north central Toronto airport. And we will go in here and put our taxi light on. Landing and strobes will come off. And then we'll park beside the Sears here and then we are going to take a tour and look at the airport here. Say we are here. So parking brake on, nav lights off, taxi lights off, mixture to cut off, mags are off, uh, beacon, avionics, and master. Well, welcome, like I said, to Buttonville. Let's hop out and we'll take a look. <clears throat> Buttonville does have a tower. It's right there. And we've got uh, Millionaire, which is an FBO here at Buttonville. We do, they do sometimes get jets in here. Um, Toronto Airways, which is a flight training center. Seneca College has a campus here. Aircraft maintenance. This looks really good and then we get the hangers down here what you do have out of here is some of the news uh, aircraft there's a I think it's a 182 flies or, or I know it used to fly out of here and the guy would do the news every day uh, there was also uh, some helicopters that flew out of here the rest of them were private hangers down there go to the other side of the airport the buildings off the street here I believe this is 16th Avenue we'll go over the maintenance building take a look at it from the other side it's been a while since I've been out here But yeah, she looks good. And we've got a Toronto Transit bus sitting out front. And a Go bus, which is the regional bus line over on the other side. All the signs are there. And there's the entrance to the fancier entrance to the private jet owners at Millionaire. And then the tower. Go into the tower, and I'll leave you looking at it from the corner over Buttonville Airport.
guys, thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in what uh, the creator is doing, you can uh, go to the link below both of his airports. He does have a light version of Brampton, uh, not as detailed, but still pretty good, which is free. Uh, and the sceneries for Mississauga, Niagara Falls, Oakville, and Toronto are all free as well. Um, and even if you're paying for it, it's not a lot. So it adds uh, a lot to the game, brings a lot more out, and certainly looks a lot better than the Autogen airports. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye for now.